The hard part for me was not to pick up the racket, it was to put it down. My best days and my worst days all took place on the court. And even now, there are so few matches that I don't remember. Tennis is one of the most physically and mentally demanding sports in the world. There is no time limit on how long your match can last. You can't take any timeouts. You can't have a substitute to come in to take your place when you need a break. And there's absolutely no coaching allowed. And to be honest, most of the battle isn't even against your opponent. It's against yourself. But there's a reason why over 1.2 billion people play tennis around the world and why it continues to attract a wide variety of players with its popularity. Over the course of my final season as a collegiate athlete, I wanted to know why so many have sacrificed so much for the sport and why many will continue to do the same even after their college career ends. After all, the average professional tennis player with a ranking of 200 in the world still only makes roughly $50,000 annually. And that's just enough to cover the cost of private coaching, travel, and lodging. The sport itself is lonely, psychologically challenging, and requires serious dedication. But regardless of where these college players have ended up, one thing is clear. Tennis teaches you life lessons both on and off the court. First, we get to sit down with Cornell's coach, Silvio Tanisuyu. According to the NCAA, roughly 30% of student athletes quit their sport within the four years of college. Here, we get to hear Coach Tanisuyu's reaction to this statistic and why this is the case. Um, the, um, the 30% statistics? First of all, I never knew that. I think that's um, frightening. Um, but I think a lot of the guys have a certain perception of what uh, the sport, what the sport is going to provide for them, and the benefits is going to provide for them, and the excitement that is going to provide for them. And I think they they go to college and they're ex they're you know they're ex what what they're experiencing compared to what they were expecting. Uh, it's it's very different. Next, we meet Carlo Losic. Carlo was a member of the Cornell men's tennis team his freshman year. Unfortunately, he ran into some personal issues when on the team, including with coach Tanisuyu and the team's strenuous schedule. So in Croatia, I had a lot tighter connection with my coach, um, um, unlike here, but it's also because here it was 15 guys training at the same time and back home I was training alone with my coach. Um, so it's, it was very like, it was a lot easier for me to balance both like personal relations with my coach and, and the tennis related stuff. Um, so it was um, a lot more personal, but here was a lot more tennis focused and intense. And um, here I trained a lot more. It was uh, four, three, four or five hours a day, very intense. And it, and it, was, uh, it was hard to sustain it for, for a long time. Rohan Sika is currently a sophomore on the Cornell men's tennis team. Originally being from England, he speaks on the differences between those two environments and training schedules. So when I was in high school, I played tennis basically every day. I would go to school nine to four or whatever, and then I'd come home, change, and then head straight to the courts. So I'd probably train maybe three hours a day or two hours a day, five to seven, five to eight, something about that. And then I'd come home, do my homework, and then the next day I would do the same. Um, I think I think the main difference for me between when I was in 
high school playing tennis and when I was in college, I would set my own schedule and so it was all my choice. Whereas when I'm here in college, you're told you have to be in fitness at eight to nine in the morning, and then you have to be in training five to eight. It's, it's, it's a grind and I think it definitely takes its toll on you. David Wolfson is a junior that primarily plays at the number one position for the team. Long and hard training on and off the court has been ingrained in his work ethic from a young age. I was fortunate enough to grow up with a very good uh, federation and they were investing a lot of money into tennis at that time. So when I was 10 years old, they put me into this program where they would pay for my training, um, fitness trainer, psychologist, and they would put, basically they'd put this team together for me to be able to help achieve my goals. So I started taking the sport very seriously. Trainings were really intense. We would, I would be training before I went to school from seven to nine, then I would go to school from 10, 15 to 3.30, then I would go to the courts at four o'clock, train from four to six, then I would be working with the fitness trainer from six to seven. And this was growing up all through middle school and high school. And it was very different than the average day in the life of a middle school um, child. So when I was six years old, I had this big dream to be the best tennis player in the world and I really wanted to be pro. But I recall my coach telling me like, you're gonna go to college, that's the path for you. But I, in my mind, I was gonna go pro right after high school. I didn't really wanna study that much. Um, and I just wanted to play tennis full time. But senior year of high school, I had a couple of injuries and I realized that college tennis might be the best path and I could use college tennis as a stepping stone to get to the pro circuit. And some of the guys I, I think are just purely in, in their mind, I think they're, they're checked out. I think they're, I mean, look, for lack of a better saying, I just want to be true, truthful and, and honest. It's, I think they're, they're done in their mind with the game. I think they just want to use the opportunity to go to a school. And I think certainly in the Ivy League, this is this is happening is much more prevalent than I think in, in other Division One schools. And you know that tennis is a, a means to an end and it can get you in, in one of these great schools. And then you see guys and their level of interest and le level of investment that is kind of depleting immediately after they come in. Now, like after a year and a half, two years later, it's like, I think uh, it's, it's a lot easier for me. They're still obviously playing tennis, but I... I found a, a good balance between hanging out with them and having like good other friends. My social life is uh, a lot more normal and uh, I'm still I'm playing good tennis on the club level and uh, it's a lot, it's very, it's less stressful than playing for varsity. Still like finding time to, to enjoy the sport I love, uh, but also like it's not very intense and made some new friends. So at the beginning it was very hard, now it's a lot easier. So, definitely as part of the social things that I was doing, I was exposed to certain things that I wasn't exposed to when I was at home. Very um, American things that I wasn't so familiar with. One of them being Greek life, like fraternities. Um, we have a team rule that you can't, you can't join a fraternity, you can't be involved in fraternities. And I actively did go against that rule. I, show I, I made friends with these one these these kids they were in a fraternity um, I didn't join properly but I was certainly involved with them and a lot of the guys on the team knew and it became known to the coach in the end that I was doing these things and so um, we I was called in for a team meeting I was I didn't know what was gonna happen and we were all called in it was me and two other friends who had done the same thing as I had and our coach sort of just said, came out of the blue and just said, um, it has come to my attention that you have been involved in fraternities. And I remember just thinking like my heart sunk and I knew I was gonna be in a lot of trouble. And it was one of those moments that's just, I'll look back on it and never forget because it was very, it was just, it was a stressful moment. And I didn't really know how to react. I didn't really say much. I went home, thought about it. Um, because I knew that it was a team rule and I knew that the coach had said if, we, if, if we'd done these things then we'd be off the team. So I, I'll admit I didn't think my prospects for staying on the team were looking great. 
I spoke to my parents about it. That was the only time I really went through my mind to quit the team because I thought if I'm off the team for a whole year, I'm going to be so behind the rest of the guys on the team, there's no way I'm ever going to play again. And so I spoke to my parents and they, they really felt strongly that they'd sent me out to the US to play tennis um, and they really felt strongly that I should try and do my best to stay back on the team. So I listened to them, they're my parents and I respect them and so that's what I did and luckily I ended up being readmitted to the team about a month into spring which was, I'm grateful for that and I've really had a lot better time this year since I've managed to get back on the team. I, I want to always find way to stimulate growth, you know, like growth, like I want the guys to be excited about growth, like whether it's on the court or off the court and and most certainly I think this year has, has been a great lesson for me because I think it's like off the court is maybe much more important than, than on the court. And I think it's if, if the growth happens off the court, it's it's going to kind of reflect itself on the court. Um, so I, I want I want to find ways to, to stimulate growth, to make them excited about about ideas of exploring things. And many, many times I feel like you, you need to explore those things. And many, most of the growth that I've seen, uh, I witness, it just happens in outside of the comfort zone and it happened it happened it happens in you know when you're when you're meeting adversity when you're you're dealing with an obstacle and and i think the initial reaction to people it's to to turn away from obstacles is to 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 find something that's much more comfortable much more convenient and my biggest i i think philo i mean my my most important aspect of my philosophy is to to ease the the player's perspective on what it means to to face adversity and to to understand that that's a an opportunity that allows you to to explore yourself like that's allow, allows you to explore things about life and that's where growth happens these stories are unique and reflect the different lives college athletes lead when presented with these opportunities in the same way in which we conquer challenges on the court we are tasked with the challenge of using our undergraduate experience to figure out who we are and who we want to become, all while fulfilling the duties of being a full-time student. Being an athlete is so much more than having athletic skill. It is so much more than a score or a record to break. Every single obstacle we face is a chance to prove to ourselves time and time again, and that is why we keep doing what we do. And while many of us will be putting down our rackets for good when we graduate, the lessons we learned with it will stay with us forever.